it's good to be reminded where we get our strength from. Our strength comes from the Lord. Amen. Um, I, am, I am still um, overwhelmed by our worship service last week and how it blessed us tremendously. Um, it's always good when God when God takes control and whatever God desires is what happens. And we witnessed that the Holy Spirit preached her own sermon, called her own people, and blessed us tremendously. I went home from a morning of worship and felt like I had preached. But I am so grateful and, um, and honored that I was here and was able to experience um, the presence, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, it just soaked us tremendously. If our hearts and minds are clear, as we continue on in the Gospel of Mark, I will be looking at the text, Gospel of Mark chapter seven, verses 24 to 30. If you are able to stand, please stand. If you can't stand, the Lord understands. It reads like this. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it. Yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Cyrene, Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to, de to drive the demon out of her daughter. First let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to try to talk about humble faith. Humble faith. Join me in prayer. Most gracious, most holy Father, again, I just ask and pray that you would do for me what only a God can do. Calm my nerves, regulate my breathing, and let your word be proclaimed that someone would understand, grow, mature, and be saved. And God, if you do all of that, we know and we believe we will always give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus Christ, we say amen. Humble, humble faith. There's a simple question that I desire to ask all of us. Can you ever be in a position or a point in your life where things are so horrific, or you are in such a position where you don't even, when you look in the mirror, you don't even understand who you are, where you don't even accept you. But not only do you not accept you, but in some senses, in some reality, the world even looks at you a little weird and a little funny. Just, you're not your normal self. Who you used to be, just you no longer are, and and as you look in the mirror, you just don't understand the person in the mirror. The question I have to ask you and anyone else is, does that mean that Jesus does not have time for you? Uh, that Jesus' grace, God's grace, is no longer available to you? Can you be in a situation 
so down and out, so far in the pit, that for whatever reason, you can believe, if that isn't even possible, that God's grace will not meet you where you are. Is there some person that you have identified in your world that's too far off from being helped or being saved by God? I think that's the question that sometimes we all have to wrestle with. I think I've wrestled with it many times, thinking that somebody just too far off. God, can you really help them? Everybody else has cut them off. Everybody else has pushed them to the side. And I'm starting to wonder every now and then, God, are they too far from you where even you won't extend your grace? I know that might be a difficult question. I know if some of us may just be too sanctified to say that you actually been in that place, but I beg a different. I think a lot of people have once been there. Can God grace reach me? Can God's grace reach my situation? Can God's grace help my family? And that's what we have really when we look at this text. The sister in the text is a Syrophoenician woman. And in the biblical days, this Syrophoenician woman, according to the Jews, were people who were on the margins of society. Matter of fact, it's one of the the craziest lines that has ever been recorded in the book that we hold up that called Bible. Jesus calls somebody a dog. And not just somebody, Jesus called a woman a dog. Initially reading it, it it catches me off guard, but the truth be told, in that day and time, Syrian Phoenicians, Gentiles, were considered to be less than according to the Jews that the Jews looked at them as though they were dogs. And that should not shock any of us whose skin has been touched by God's son. Because there's been a time in this place called America that the African-American community, African-American males, African-American females have been treated, have been looked upon as being just dogs. But even in spite of all of that, God's grace still reached us. They may have thought that we were less than, but God thought we were more than. They may have thought that we were worth nothing, but God had us to be somebody. This text speaks to that because Jesus is trying to get away. He is, been, he's been attacked by the Pharisees verbally. They get to the point where they're trying to set him up that he would get to Calvary's cross quicker. And Jesus is getting tired and Jesus is becoming overwhelmed. So Jesus leaves out. And he goes to the northern part of Galilee what they're called Tyrus or Sidon. And it says that he goes into a house, and when he goes into the house, he does not want to be bothered. But then in the text it reads, but a woman found out he was there. And this woman um, daughter was possessed by demons, and she was trying to get to Jesus because Jesus was there. Jesus didn't want to be bothered. He did not have the time. He was overwhelmed. He was tired. He wanted to take a, a, a respite. He wanted to just chill out. And, and you know, just like I know, that that's not unusual for anybody who's human, that every now and then you just want to 
chill out, get away. You just don't want to be bothered. You want to take a respite. Don't nobody call me. Don't nobody send me an email. Don't nobody text me. Don't nobody do anything. Matter of fact, if you are honest with yourself, your phone probably was on and you looked at it and you just ignored the text and the phone call because you just want to be alone and not to be bothered. And that's where Jesus was in this text. But may I parathetically tell each and every one of us that though Jesus um, desire to be alone, that Jesus, just like our God, that when there is a need, can't stop but being God. That somehow, in some way, needs will always find Jesus. I, I need to say that because that makes me happy, that, 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 that not necessarily mine, may, but a need will always find Jesus. Jesus, that wherever a need is, it will find Jesus. And this woman, who is not mentioned by a male figure, does not say whether or not she was married, but most likely she was a woman of, of much means. Most likely she was a woman with great status. Most likely she was a woman that had a particular amount of wealth, and she knew that Jesus was in town, and her resume is long, but the only thing that mattered on her resume is that she had a daughter that was demon-possessed, and she had a need that money could not buy. That was on her resume, and Jesus now is able to look at her resume and understand that she has a need. And as we read the text and as we begin to understand the text, we learn that, yes, she was pushed to the margins. And the sad part about it is that she had to find Jesus in a private place because at that particular time, women could not approach a man with authority out in the public that when we saw the woman with the issue of blood, she took a chance. And the last person you saw who reached Jesus was Jairus. And because he was a Greek, he was a, 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 a Roman authority uh, with authority, he was able to approach Jesus out in the public. But this woman did not have that right. So she had a need, but I'm amazed by her need found Jesus and she was able to tell Jesus her need and she comes and what she does she shows us something about humble faith can I just point it out real quick I'm going to get out of each and every one of our ways so you can go ahead and cook up your grill and have all the stuff that you want to have because here it is real simple that the first thing she does is she falls at his feet and may I suggest that that's our first point right there that humble faith starts with Worship. I, I, okay, I, 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 maybe you just didn't catch it, but but if you're gonna have faith, that faith ultimately sometimes start from worship. That you have to have enough faith that no matter what you are going through, that it does not disturb your worship. That, that in spite of what you're going through and in spite of what you're dealing with, in spite of what's on your mind, in spite of what's going on in your body, that it does not disturb nor bothers your worship, that your worship to God is about God and God alone. And if you can just get to God's house, and matter of fact, you don't even have to get to God's house, wherever you are, that you are able to worship God because of who God is. And this is what she shows us because her daughter is demon possessed and money could not help her daughter. And the first thing she does when she get to Jesus presence is she falls at her feet, at his feet. And she begins to give a posture of worship. Now, the best way that I can um, 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 explain this is an uh, illustration from Tony Evans. Tony Evans gives a, a, a wonderful illustration. He talks about a woman um, who was pregnant for the very first time. And she was pregnant for the very first time, and she was in labor. And because she was in labor, she was experiencing a whole lot of pain. And it's the normal thing to experience pain, but as the pain begins to get closer, you expect to have a delivery of the pain. But this particular woman, she kept having pains, and the pains were getting closer and closer, but there was no delivery that was taking place. The doctor comes into the room, and when the doctor comes into the room, he tells her the reason why that you are not delivering your baby is because the head is positioned in the wrong place. 
that it's easier to, for a baby to be born when the baby's head is positioned down, but your baby head is positioned um, um, up. And that's the incorrect place to be positioned for you to have a delivery of a baby. And may I suggest to all of us that most of the time we can't get delivered from our pain is because our head is positioned in the wrong place. That, 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 that sometimes and most times that we can't um, get rid of the pain that exists in our lives because our head is not focused in the right place. And I stop by to let all of us know that in spite of your pain and in spite of your hurt, if you just lift your head up and look from whence your hit from which the hills from which your help comes from, you can have your deliverance. Am I talking to anybody for a little while that every now and then you got to make sure that your head is not faced the wrong way, even when you're going through the things that you are going through, that your head has to be lifted up, because if your head is lifted up, then you can lift up your hands. And if you lift up your head and your hands, you can give God the glory and the honor in spite of what it is that you're going through. And this sister gets to Jesus' feet. She began to worship. And it's, it's interesting because as you read it, um, um, she begged Jesus to drive the demons out of her daughter. And listen to Jesus' response. It's an unbelievable response because Jesus says, first let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Now, hear me. Jesus was talking um, directly and Jesus was talking according to the time, because here is the problem in the text that most of the time we may not pick up that the children of Israel were considered to be the children that God was coming for. That the dogs, in every sense of the word, were the Gentiles. And here it is that the lady was asking for her daughter to get some form of help for the, for the spirits to be um, driven out of his daughter. So he looked at her and basically was saying, listen, I have what you need, but if I have what you need, it ought to first go to the house of Israel and not to the dogs. Now, I don't know about you, but that might would have ticked me off. I don't know about you, but that might have would have disturbed me. I don't know about you, but that might have looked made me look at this dude called Jesus. And if the truth be told, I might have would have had something else to say to him. He just called her a dog. He just called her a dog. And look at her response. Her response is what blows my mind away, because if you're going to have any type of faith, you ought to have a sense of humble faith. And here it is right here. Not only must humble faith be a faith that starts with worship, but watch this. A humble faith must relinquish all control. It's right there in text. And how do we know that? Here it is. My brothers, my sisters, it's right there as we read in verse 28. Look what she says. She says, Lord. Yeah, I missed it. Can I say it one more time? Verse 28. He said. He said, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. And she says, Lord, I need to say it one more time because it makes me feel good as a Baptist preacher. He said, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. And she comes back and she says, Lord, and you have to remember she never met Jesus prior to this. Only thing that she understands is what has been said about Jesus and her first statement to Jesus after talking, after asking him about his daughter, about her daughter being spirits being driven out of her. She says, Lord. And here it is, my sisters and my brothers, that if you're going to have any type of faith, the first thing you have to do is relinquish all control. And the way you relinquish all control is to acknowledge Jesus to be Lord. I don't maybe that does not catch you off guard, but I'm making as simple as I can make it be that if you're going to have to have faith, that the faith that you need and the faith that suggests that Jesus must be Lord. That means he's Lord over your life. He's Lord over your mind. He's Lord over your situation. He's Lord over your thoughts. He's Lord over your actions. He's Lord over each and everything that comes across you. Even if your child is sick, whatever is and whatever will be the outcome 
come, God, you are still Lord. I don't know if you want That means that whatever happens, I'll accept it, but I can't accept it if I don't accept you to be Lord. And I just stopped by to let some of us know that most of the time that's the problem in our lives, that we don't allow God to be Lord over our lives. So therefore, we think we can do whatever, whenever we want to do it, and whatever outcomes those will come, the way we desire it to come. And I just stopped by to let you know, God does not need you to make God Lord, that God is already Lord all by God's self. He's Lord because he woke you up this morning. He's Lord because he started you on your day. He's Lord because he allows the sun to rise. He's Lord because he puts you to sleep. He's Lord because he wakes you up. He's Lord because he puts a roof over your table, over your head. He's Lord because he put food on your table. And the question is not whether or not he's Lord. The question is, does you accept God to be your Lord? He says, she says, she says, she says, she says, Lord, because you have to relinquish all control. But look how else she 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 frames this thing, because it's amazing to me when you read it. Listen what she says. She says, Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. I'm going to say that one more time. Even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. In some sense, she's kind of uh, providing a different perspective. But before I give you that point, look how she flipped it. But when she flipped it, look what she said. She said, Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Watch this. She didn't deny what Jesus called her. She didn't argue with what Jesus called her because what she needed was worth more than what Jesus called her. I need to say that one more time. She she didn't deny it. She didn't even argue with him. And because she, she relinquished all control, if that's what you want to call me, then so be it, call me whatever it is, because you are still Lord. And here it is, because what she did is amazing, because she did not get angry over how God dispenses grace. It's right there in text. Jesus says, for the bread ought to go to who? The children of Israel first or to the children. And he was using the parable to say the children of Israel. Here it is that God distributes his grace any way God desires to distribute it. Okay, let me see if I can get you on my block real quick, because here it is. You can have faith when you accept that somebody else can be healed, even if you ain't going to get healed. Ooh, 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 that, that, that watch this, that you can have faith that you don't get upset with God because God is blessing your neighbor and you can't see your blessing. You don't get upset with God because God has opened up a door for somebody else and it seems as though the door is closed in your face. You don't, get ex- you don't get annoyed with God because God is on your street doing this for this person and doing this for this person, but yet and still your situation has not changed. She understood, yes, the bread ought to go to the children's first. I'm not denying that, God. You are right, but if you are truly God and if you are giving out bread to the children and this is your house, then ultimately that means the children are going to get fed. And if the children get fed, that means crumbs fall underneath the table and surely you can bless me at the same time. I don't, I, 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 maybe I can see it like this. Watch this, watch this. It's, it's, it's amazing because she did not get upset because he said the children ought to have the bread first because she had no problem with how God dispenses his grace. I, I learned this, and I'm about to get out your way in about five minutes. I learned this because, um, y'all know, um, somehow, some way, language point towards me when it comes down to a dog named Onyx. Somehow, Kenny calls me uh, a granddaddy. I don't know the language because I, 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 as though Onyx is her child, and because Onyx is her in her mind, her child, then that means Onyx must be my 
grandchild. I, I, I'm, I'm confused. Oh, what is it? A grand puppy. What? That, grand dog. Okay, okay, whatever that might be. I, I, I know I got some dog folk. I ain't mad. I got some dog folk. I understand that. Right, right, right. But that's not how I associate. However, this is what I learned from Onyx. Every time I begin to eat food and I sit at my table and, and, and I sit at my table and I'm eating my food, Onyx comes and lay right here. Now watch this. It's amazing to me because the things that would usually annoy Onyx and catch his Onyx attention because I'm eating food and her focus is on what may fall from my plate. That the things that would annoy her or move her does not move her. And she's convinced, watch this, that if she stays there long enough, that what is ever is on my plate, that she will get it. Now hear me and hear me well, it's an amazing thing because I've come to learn that that dog has some sense. And the reason I know that dog has some sense, because every time that she does it, she gets what she wants. Every time. But here is the trick, though. Here's the trick. She gets from my plate after I'm full, which means that I had more than what I needed. Ooh, did you get it? Did you get it? Okay, 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 okay. She gets it because I finished whatever I have, and because I finished whatever I have, I now will give her what is left on my plate. And she knows if I just sit there, I'll get whatever is on his plate. Now, she never asked me what's on the plate. She doesn't care about what's on the plate. She just cares that let, let, finish doing what you're doing and give me what you know you're going to give me. My brothers and my sisters, I just stopped by to let you know real quick that this sister understood that if she talked to Jesus in the correct way that he needs to understand. Watch this. If you are truly who you are and I just called you Lord, that if you are Lord, that means you have more than enough food and more than enough blessings that you don't ever just have to bless them, but you can also bless me at the same time. If I just stay here and don't move and not get an attitude then surely you will bless me that you can't bless the children and not bless the dogs at the same time. It's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing. So look what she, look, 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 look how she's flipped it. She flipped it. And if you're going to have humble faith, my sisters and my brothers, it's faith that starts with worship. She fell at his feet. It's faith that relinquished control because she calls him Lord and she does not get disturbed or distracted by how God distributes God's grace. But here's the last point. As I, as I leave, is because this, watch this. Faith provides a different perspective. It's, it, it, it's right there in the text, because in verse 28, as she flipped it, she said, Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. In other words, I think I just mentioned it a few seconds ago, that if you're going to bless them, Surely you got more than enough food to bless the dogs. And if you want to call me a dog, and I know that you have healed folk before, surely you got enough blessings and enough healing to heal me too. So in other words, I'm not going to get annoyed by the fact of what you called me, because even if you called me what I think is even wrong or disrespectful, the fact is, even at that stature, I still ought to get what you have because I just identified you as Lord. In other words, my sisters and my brothers, you can always go to God and call God exactly who God is, and God can only do one thing and one thing only. God got to keep on blessing you and got to keep on giving you what you need. Matter of fact, that's really what faith is all about that you understand that God has more than enough healing more than enough blessing more than enough time more 
than enough hope, more than enough patience that he cannot hold it all to himself. Matter of fact, I've never known God to go bankrupt of anything. When I needed his protection, he was not bankrupt of protection. When I needed his help, he was not bankrupt of helping me. When I needed his healing, he was not bankrupt in healing. When I needed his deliverance, he was not bankrupt in deliverance. When I needed his um, guidance, he was not bankrupt in his guidance. All I had to do is to have a little bit of patience and stay right where I was and God will get there right on time. Matter of fact, Grandma say he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And can I ask anybody in the house, have you met a God that has always been on time? Been on time when I needed him. Been on time when I wanted him. Been on time when I needed my help. This sister, this sister, this sister made it clear. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. This sister made it clear that, that, that even though the world said I'm not worth nothing, that your grace can still reach me. And your grace can still reach me. And the what I need, I know you will provide for me. And this is amazing, right? Because what she needed, she needed for her daughter. Her daughter was not with her. Her daughter was going was somewhere else. So after she fell at his feet and gave a posture of worship, after she relinquished all control and called him Lord, after she went ahead and um, did not get offended by how he distributes grace, and after she went ahead and gave a different perspective to let the Lord see it a little bit differently, look what happens next. God says to her, Jesus says to her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. The next line that ends and I'm out your way is this. She went home. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it, but I got to say it one more time. He said, with what you said, go, your daughter is healed. She, she, you, 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 you know, you, she didn't have nobody come report back to her. She didn't have nobody send her an email. She didn't have nobody FaceTime her daughter. She didn't have nobody there to say what happened or what did not happen. He said, he said, for such a reply, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. Well, there you go right there, my sisters, my brothers. That's the last phase of faith, of humble faith. Humble faith says, I believe. I believe. If that's what you said, I'm going to go. And I'm going to go with some anticipation. I don't know if you caught it, but that makes me feel good. I, 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 I'm going to go because I believe. I'm going to go because I believe you're going to set me free. I'm going to go because I believe you're going to heal my loved one. I'm going to go because I believe you're going to open up a door. I'm going to go because I believe that you're going to make a way out of no way. I'm going to go because I know you're a bridge over troubled water. I'm going to go because I know you are Alpha and Omega. I'm going to go because I take your word. I'm going to go because you never fell short of an answer. I'm going to go because you always do what you said you're going to do. God, you are Lord, and since you told me to go, I'm just going to go ahead. And the text makes it clear. When she went home, her daughter was healed. And I just stopped by to let somebody know every now and then you have to have some humble faith. Every now and then you got to learn how to worship God first. Every now and then you got to learn how to relinquish all control and say, if God does it, God is going to do it. If God doesn't do it, I'm fine with it. But as long as God walks with me, as long as God talks with me, as long as God is with me. I know I'll be all right. It may not be what I want, but I know it'll be all right. Thanks be to God that we serve a God that will never leave us nor forsake us. Thanks be unto a God, a God that will never leave our place nor our space. Thanks be to a God that will never let go of our hand. Thanks be to a God that will never abandon us. of what she was called she just stayed gave her perspective was not mad 
about how God distributed his grace and decided she was just going to go ahead and worship and gave a different perspective. If that's what you're going to call me, what about this? And pointed it back to his goodness. And you can't say you good and not be good to me. And what did he tell her? Go. Your daughter has been healed. And she got home and realized her daughter was healed. All because she had some humble faith. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. The doors of the church are now open. If you're out there in the digital world, you've been struggling or you know someone who's been struggling you want to intercede on their behalf and you just don't know which way to go or which way to turn I offer you Jesus right now I offer you Jesus not theoretically I offer Jesus to you experientially that since I accepted him as Lord and a part of accepting him as Lord is to repent of my sins and call him Lord over my life. That since then, life has been pretty good. It ain't always been great, but it's been pretty good. And it's been good because God has been walking with me. So my sister, my brother, wherever you are right now, if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, I offer Jesus the Christ to you as Lord and Savior. Don't be afraid. Just repent of your sins and say he is Lord and right where you are, you are saved. The next thing I want to offer you is maybe you know him as Lord and Savior, but you don't have a church home. And my sister, my brother, the, uh, the worst place you can be is to know him as Lord and Savior, but don't have a church home. Listen, I offer you Spring Creek Baptist Church, not because we are a perfect church, but because we serve a perfect God. Shift your mindset from just observing church to become a disciple of Jesus the Christ and a member of a church where you can grow, where you can walk with other believers, where you can uh, mature in the faith. And to do that, all you gotta do is go to our website, www.myscbc.org. Click, I wanna be a member. And right where you are, Deacon will get back in touch with you within 24 hours and bring you into the fold. And we'll be glad to welcome you as brother, as sister, as friend, and walk with you on the journey. And maybe you've been checking us out and you like what you've been hearing, but you're too far away from us. And I get that. Listen, our goal in life is real simple. All we want is folks to be saved in the name of Jesus the Christ. We want to be a church to help folk be all that they can be in the fullness of Jesus the Christ. And we want folk to be connected to the body of Christ. And because of that, if you fall away, we have many sister churches. All you have to do is dial our church number, 804-639-4151. Leave a message and we'll get right back in touch with you and we'll connect you to a sister church where you will hear the word being preached, where you can hear the word being taught and you can grow in Christ. My sisters, my brothers, it's my prayer and my hope that you were blessed today by God's message, humble faith, and that you have a little bit more fuel to continue on in your walk. And because of by faith, we know already that we can leave this place and we can leave from our computers. We know somebody has been saved on this Sunday. Somebody has been set free on this Sunday. Somebody has been delivered on this Sunday. Somebody has joined a church on this Sunday. And we believe that by faith. So because we believe that by faith, we're going to give God a round of applause and just thank him for saving somebody and delivering somebody. Amen. Amen. We'll now have Deacon Sheila Bryan come for offertory.
several ways that we can give with you on the monitors behind you. And those who can stand, I'd ask you to please stand as we give out, if you read our offering list. It says, but who are we that we should be able to give as generous, generously as this? For all, all things, things come, come from, from you, you, and, and what, what we, we now offer, offer is already yours. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you today thanking you, O God, first of all, for that powerful word, O God. We thank you, O God, for this offering that's coming forth. We ask, O God, that those that have to give, God, you bless them. Also, Lord, those that don't have to give, Lord, that you also bless them. That we can use this offering for the uplifting of your kingdom here on earth. As we continue to bless, give to you, O God, we ask, thank you for your many blessings. In your precious son, Jesus Christ, we do pray. prepare to partake in the Lord's Supper this day. We pray that you're watching us on through the virtual world. Have your elements prepared and ready to participate. And if you can stand wherever you are, let us read the communion litany. For I have received from the Lord the teaching that I passed on to you that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took a piece of bread. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup and said, this cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink it, do so in memory of me. It follows that if one of you eats the Lord's bread or drinks from his cup in a way that dishonors him, you are guilty of sin against the Lord's body and blood. For if you do not recognize the meaning of the Lord's body when you eat the bread and drink from the cup, you bring judgment on yourself as you eat and drink. That is, that why, is why many are sick and weak and many sleep. If we would examine ourselves first, we would not come under God's judgment. But we are judged and punished by the Lord so that we shall not be condemned together with the world. So then, my friends, when you gather together to eat the Lord's Supper, wait for one another the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for, we thank you so much for the practice of communion that you have given your body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. We ask your Lord that from this day and for every Sunday in communion as we go forth, we will embrace this in the true spirit of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all your blessings. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.
Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks, blessed it, break it, and gave it to his disciples, and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. Likewise, this is a symbol of the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us drink together. And they left out, singing hymns one to another and passing peace. Let us do likewise on this holiday weekend. Leave out from wherever you are singing hymns of joy and hymns of peace. But not only sing it, pass joy and peace one to another. Let the people of God say amen, amen, and amen.